Hello, my name is Ben. Um, this is my first presentation for the first paper uh, for Complex 52921B, Engineering Self-Adaptive Systems. So the title of this paper is Dynamic High-Level Requirements in Self-Adaptive Systems. It's by David A. Rossi, Francesco Poggi, and Paolo Ciancarini. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing those names. Uh, it's from the Proceedings of the 33rd Annual ACM Symposium on Applied Computing in 2018. So NFRs are the primary influence behind the design decisions that ultimately create a software architecture. With autonomic computing, these decisions that previously occurred at design time now leak into the runtime. We can broadly divide NFRs into two categories, uh, low and high level. Low level NFRs are those which are, or are very close to being, directly measurable, what are called operationalizable. A good example is performance you can directly turn this into a value like five milliseconds. On the other hand, a high level NFR is one which is difficult or impossible to operationalize. An example of a high level NFR might be usability. How do you measure usability? Probably around the best you could do is say that you'd like 90% of users to be able to easily navigate your interface without assistance or something like that. These high level NFRs are often called soft goals. When an operationalizable goal changes, the system can just recompute the operationalization of said goal. However, when a soft goal changes, the system must evaluate its current architecture to see if it satisfies this new goal and then, failing this check, explore possible variations of the system that lead to the highest satisfaction, essentially finding a good enough solution. Current solutions attempt to operationalize all goals, including soft goals, automatically. While this would solve the problem, there is no general solution of this kind. Proposals that adopt this approach constrain the problem in various ways to make it more manageable and require very complex and detailed requirement runtime models, which requires developers to know and use several specific requirements engineering methodologies and languages. The resultant models often are abstracted to such a level that to a stakeholder or even an engineer without the requisite knowledge, they're difficult to comprehend. So, a way of solving this problem is still lacking. Soft goals can be found in many areas where an autonomic system may exist, as there are often the NFRs related to user interface, for example. A solution to this problem really is needed. In the early 2010s, there were a few papers published which focused on this particular issue. The first mainly addressed the issue of needing systems that adapt to changing requirements, which it termed requirements-aware systems. Uh, the second touches on the topic of awareness requirements, which are, briefly put, Requirements which specify the runtime behavior of other requirements. And the third introduces the previously touched upon idea behind current soft call adaptation, which is to evaluate possible system changes and decide on one which is good enough. So a mega model is defined in the paper as a specific model capturing both runtime models and adaptation activities. In other words, one that encompasses the entire system and all its uh, behavior. This paper proposes to add an explicit high-level model to the runtime mega model, which models the soft goals of the system, linking them to reconfiguration policies already available, and thus tying changes in the model to architectural modifications. This model, providing it's well-defined, can be automatically converted into a runtime model using model-to-model -model transformations, uh, as shown in this diagram here. Models at runtime is a term from a relatively old circa 2008 paper that introduces the idea of a runtime model, among other things, as a causally connected model, one where a change to the model is reflected in the system it's modeling. This behavior has been broadly adopted uh, by different areas of autonomic computing, but another key idea with relatively less uptake is that runtime models should be able to be refined from design timelines. High level requirements models, which are more stakeholder friendly, this solves the problem of having difficult to understand requirements models which aren't presentable to a stakeholder or an uninformed person. This approach also removes the need for operationalizing soft goals. Instead, the models formed by relating soft goals to architectural design time decisions, further enhanced by weighting the soft goals and quantifying the effects of the architectural changes on said goals. To evaluate their approach, the researchers set up an experiment using the same model outlined on the previous slide which has to do with a web portal for some kind of academic association. The load pattern used was a linear increase from 10 to 110 connections over two minutes, 
holding those 110 connections for the next seven minutes and then over the final two minutes decreasing down to 10 connections goal b green or g2 was given a higher weighting than avoid delays and errors g3 and maximize the user experience or g1 and then the second time around the weighting was inverted to favor g1 and g3 at runtime so here's the graph of their results and the main thing to look at is the yellow line which represents the number of cluster nodes in the left hand graph which favored g2 which was uh, being more green the nodes scaled in small steps which was expected as this is the policy which has the highest influence on the soft goal b green as you can see there the arrow going from the policy scale at small steps has a weighting of three pluses on b green goal conversely the graph on the right which favored both g1 and g3 in weightings the policies of scaling in large steps and over provisioning uh, were adopted which is reflected in the yellow line once again with those two big steps instead of the multiple smaller steps and you can see in the uh the, the diagram on the left hand side there that scaling at large steps and over provisioning have a higher impact on that avoid delays and errors and thus maximize user experience goal that's g1 and g3 um, than scaling at small steps does now one thing i will note is i think there's a typo in the requirements model there you can see on the arrow from horizontally scale at large steps down to avoid delays and errors there's a single minus there i suspect that's supposed to be one or two uh, positives because in the paper they show that after the automatic uh, model to model transformation the influence it has on that model uh, is much larger than the over provisioning it's about uh, an influence of six over provisioning is one and then scaling at small steps is around negative two i think so i think there's a i think there's a typo in the requirements model there finally some critique um i don't really have any criticism on this paper as such the idea they've outlined of having a simple easily digestible high level requirements model which then automatically gets converted into a into a runtime model that the system can deal with is quite appealing to me i think it's important for stakeholders to be able to digest a graph or you know you like show your boss and and they can just look at it and understand it straight away without having to really get into the the finer details um, potentially one drawback of a system of like this would be that it relies on being in an unbounded system which is one that doesn't have any constraints on the architectural changes that the system can make at runtime um, which is sort of a positive and a negative because it allows new policies and thus links to goals to affect the system at runtime so you could add in a new policy later if you wanted to and that could modify the architecture as much as it wants um, but the same fact means that the system could modify the architecture in a way that you didn't plan for it to and that you don't really want it to but still happens to satisfy your model uh, and that's the end of my review on this paper